Fatima tries to take things to the next level with Paul. Zach is reflecting on his past and the trauma that it has brought him. And Angela, if you're going to be the good friend, I'm going to need you to be a good friend. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Zatima video. And in this video, we are breaking down season two, episode number 12. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any of my Zatima content and conversations. And if you are returning, welcome back, boo. You know how we do. I'm your good sis, you love to talk TV with. And we're just going to go ahead and jump right on into it. Before we jump into this video, I have to let you know that this video was created during the 2023 WGA and SAG after strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, the series being covered here wouldn't exist. Through the duration of these strikes, my company and I stand in solidarity with both unions and are refusing paid opportunities presented by struck companies such as the eight major Hollywood studios. Content created on Eric Vane platforms are independent of any struck company and not created in promotion of said company. Articles, videos, and audio posts are created in critique of the media in support of the artists who created it. It is important that you, the audience, know that these strikes are a result of corporate greed. The writers and actors have been victimized by major studios for quite some time and the time is now to demand fair pay and working conditions, standardized practices across streaming business models, and other terms that will ensure the pipeline for new aspiring creatives remains open and viable for years to come. At this time, neither union is calling for a boycott of any television or film content. If you would like to support either or both unions, consider donating to strike funds, walking local picket lines, and using your social media platform to amplify messages delivered daily by union members and leaders. Links to official websites and more information can be found in the description box down below. Videos explaining both strikes and continual strike news can be found on Erica Vane TV. Now let's get into it. So the running theme with the Zatima episodes is that they pretty much pick up right where the previous one left off. And last episode, we got to see Fatima do an amazing performance and then leave with Paul. And that leaves Zach just standing there looking stupid. His friends questioning him like, oh, did you know that she could sing? I didn't know all of that. Yeah, Nathan, you know absolutely nothing about her except for the fact that you don't like her. Except the fact that you're not trying to root for their relationship and you think that she's not a good... Um, uh, a good influence a positive influence a bright light in Zach's life meanwhile you know absolutely nothing about her you been a clown you still a clown and you damn dumb period the way that I just still cannot stand Nathan or Tony is beyond me but Zach takes this opportunity to run up on Angela like where the hell is Fatima at? is she at your house she at your house you know what bet she at your house Zachary Zachariah, Zach, get your sh together, sir, because enough is enough, and I cannot take you goddamn seriously. Like, it's the amount of entitlement paired with his rage, paired with the possession. Like, take your ass to the therapist and don't talk to Fatima until you come back after about 20 sessions because enough is enough. And I didn't mention this in my breakdown for last week or for the episode 12. Um, but I want to point it out here. I have a problem with men who find ways or excuses to disrespect other women that are not the women who are, who they are sticking their penis into. Mm -hmm. So we already know that Zach is being disrespectful for Tima. They had a little argument. Cool, cool, cool. But then he also uses every opportunity, including this episode to double down on a damn disrespect when he shows up at damn Angela's house. But he like been calling Angela all types of bitches. Like you running up on her at this restaurant. I mean, in this uh, open mic situation. And when you don't get what you want, when this person don't concede or don't answer your question, you think it's a, it's a chance for you to just disrespect them. And then on top of that, it's a woman. Like I question men like that. Like this is what I'm talking about when I say misogyny plays out. And when y'all want to have a conversation about somebody changing and somebody getting better, that means that they are better with women in general with people in general it means that you're not just a good person to the people that you think that you're going to get something from or you're sticking your penis into but you operate with a certain level of ethics morals and decorum that is conducive and illustrative of a good person 
that it's not that and like for me I get you in a very weird place and you question a lot of things, Zach, and you still so hyped up and emotional you didn't want to lose for team and now you're seeing her here with Paul and she looking how she looking and they looking how they looking and you feel a way behind it. But something needs to tell you within your brain to get your together and act with a little bit of goddamn sense because all you're doing is showing exactly why she shouldn't be with your ass. Anywho, back at Angela's house, Fatima thinks that she's ready to take it to the next level sexually with Paul, but Miss Mamas can't bring herself to do it. Regardless of how that man is looking, regardless of how that man is looking at her, through her, into her soul, visually they give. I ain't even gonna hold you. While I don't think it's right for her to sleep with him right now, specifically for her emotional health and well-being, by golly, Miss Molly, I wanted you to do it so damn bad, Fatima. If anything, then to just break whatever the hell this spell is that Zach has over her, because I just... I am struggling. Struggling with how willing Fatima has been to just succumb and give in to all the drama issues and problems that come with Zach and to basically not demand much of nothing in return except for the fact of you not cheating on me and supposedly not lying to me but he's been lying and no Paul is not the great white hope the big fix for you know that particular thing but what I do think that he does offer up is a different perspective and options one of the things that i think a lot of women struggle with when they get stuck in certain toxic cycles within relationships whether it's because you love this man which i'm not faulting her or saying that she doesn't love zach but we get stuck in some of these things partially because of love but then the other part is we limit our options we build up a life or we walk away from the life that we have and we build this thing that's all encompassing of this man and what he wants and what he needs and sooner or later our lives does our lives don't even look like what they used to look like so we don't see the other people who are interested in us we don't see the other people who could want us we don't see the people who would love to give us more than what we're currently experiencing and that's what I really enjoy about Paul entering the series in reference to providing that optionality because at its core, in the Zatima relationship, Fatima is not receiving what she damn deserves, period, full stop. And to know that there's somebody out there or readily available in the universe operating right now that she knows that is willing and ready to give her everything that she deserves it adds a level of complication sure but for me i would hope that it adds a level of perspective for fatima being a woman who has already gone through being in love and being jilted and left by ian and he goes off and marries someone else like i would think that this would help her in this moment not make the same mistakes that she felt led to the demise of her relationship with Ian or basically not even a demise of her relationship with Ian. So I take that back. What led to the her betrayal of herself through her relationship with Ian. And I might be speaking over some people's heads and that's fine. If you don't get it, that's cool. Don't speak on it if you don't get what the hell I'm saying. But I love that Paul offers up that option. And what I don't love is that Tyler Perry gave Paul the words to say out of his goddamn mouth you could call me his name in what world in what way paul don't even give that kind of guy tyler be for real i'm gonna need you to dial into these characters and their character development and stay consistent because you already gave us who they supposed to be and you keep wanting to deviate and throw a little razzle dazzle in there and the shit ain't landed it ain't landed for me so while he said it i'm gonna go ahead and ignore it because it was giving all types of thirst mcgurst raggedy male and i don't believe that that's paul's intentions i believe that paul actually wants to come into fatima's life and she's not a hit it or quit it she's not like oh just another notch in his belt i think that if he was given the chance to start a full-fledged serious committed relationship with fatima he would do it so for him to say oh you could call me his name while they're having this little conversation he's trying to coerce her into having sex no tyler it don't flow and he kind of recovered for it later on because he's like okay with just sitting there and talking and realizing that she can't go there physically and all of that but that little one line it left a horrible taste in my mouth and i don't like that 
I really don't. Now, what I did enjoy is getting an understanding of what their date was like before Zach showed up, before Belinda got to being loud and then pulling Fatima on stage. Apparently, they talked about a lot of the things that they liked. They talked about their lives. They talked about their interests. And Paul listened and picked up on a lot. So we get to find out through their conversation on this couch here that they actually have so much in common. And it also feels like their relationship, if they were to pursue it, would be something that would be very easy to go into and pretty much seamless which again begs the question of Fatima why are you fighting tooth and nail to get little to nothing over here in Zach land when Paul already lives a life that aligns with what you love what you do what you think and it would be little to no effort for him to consistently help you maintain the shit that you like like Fatima ain't back in law school Fatima haven't been kicking it with the homegirls or going out and shopping how she wants to do like her life for the last however many weeks six seven weeks has literally been centered around Zach and he has given her much of nothing aside from sex and making her move into this damn duplex and then throwing a damn duplex in her face and shitting on her condo. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm still of the camp of like, we need to go ahead and give Paul a chance. I think that we need to take it slow because I understand that your heart is still wrapped up in Zach. But also, Zach has had plenty of time to step up to the plate and he is not doing it. As part of it is he doesn't know what he needs to do and therapy will help with certain things and he don't have the resources, whatever, whatever. But at some point, when you underqualify, you underqualified and your ass gets fired. That's it. Now, Angela winds up interrupting uh, Paul and Fatima connecting on the couch because she's trying to warn Fatima that Zach is on the way. And guess what? Paul ain't never scared. <laughs> he said, um, if he that mad and he coming over here, then won't, won't we just stay and wait for him? Because what he not going to do is come in here guns are blazing. And he means that so much so that he out there waiting on the curb for Zach to show up. It's still waiting for me. Anyway that's a little short-lived because Tyler then gives him this little bogus ass dialogue of like oh she really wants to be with you which is the truth you are lucky man which is the truth oh hey Paul we get it you mature and well adjusted and all of that but I think Paul was really just trying to do a temperature check to make sure he wasn't going in there trying to lay his hands on Fatima but once he figured that out because Tony is too busy losing his goddamn mind and Zach is completely calm again Zach with these goofy ass friends it's time to let them go but once he realizes that, he like, all right, we can go ahead and dip. Zach goes into, walks into Angela's house before she can even invite you in, which again, is so disrespectful. And it speaks to like your lack of respect for women is specifically in this moment, this woman's home lets me know that you have not learned much of nothing and you're a disrespectful as human being. You cannot just be nice in the moments that you're trying to play sorry and beg for Fatima back um but then be a trash individual all the other times like it just means that you're a trash individual that just knows when to shape up every now and again that does not mean that you're gonna be able to sustainably be a solid ass guy and it's like uh watching him walk into the house watching him basically disrespect angela by putting his his hand in her face calling her names hollering and screaming it's like you could be looking for Fatima all the hell you want. You could want her to talk now, but if she ain't showing up, then understand that. And then again, you are in this girl's house. There are some people who we were on live last week for our sister's keeper, and they were like, well, didn't Angela bust into Zach's house and she was ignoring him? Fatima had fired off a gun. She was checking on her friend's safety and she had no idea what was the context of that whole thing. And then after she got the context from Fatima. She apologized to Zach on her way out and said that she overreacted. What is Zach doing in this thing? He came into her damn apartment. I mean, came into her house, put his hands up in her face, ignored her, hollered and screamed for Fatima, and then continued to ignore and disrespect her on a goddamn way out. Yeah, I know. It's not the damn same. And regardless, when are we going <laughs> to... This is such a touchy topic, but I'm going to just go ahead and say it because I feel it. When are men going to stop trying to be women? So many pop up and like, well, this woman got to do this. So then why the man can't do it? If you want to be a bitch, just say that. Just say that. Where are the men who are focused on creating safe spaces for women, who are focused on actually creating moments in time and interactions where they respect women? 
regardless of if they feel disrespected and that's not to say that you should be disrespected by a woman or a woman has a right to do whatever the hell she want i'm not saying that but there has to be a certain level or standard that you carry about yourself as a man that defines your manhood for your goddamn self and that don't need to be well if the woman did it i can do it too I don't, I, them kind of men, y'all could go ahead and stay, away, stay far, far away from me because I can't. Y'all are not to be trusted. Y'all are not safe safe people to be around. And your ass is good and damn dangerous because while you operating and you want to do what women do so bad, you're also operating within a, a society that's a patriarchy that you get the benefit of the doubt in. And I don't get that same thing. So it's already still not even. Y'all act like it's so bad to just say, can you respect women and create a safe space for women? Like that's gonna kill you. If you a man who creating a safe space for women, who respecting and holding a certain level of decorum with women is going to kill you, stay your goofy ass away from me. Cause we always going forever. What's what Cardi say? We going forever have problems. Let me stay focused. The team has no rap for Zach when he shows up at Angela's house. And you know, as she should, uh, I made a comment about how Angela needed to have a little bit more smoke for Zach because if your homegirl's at your house and her man come looking and she don't want to talk to him because she was avoiding confrontation, and guess what? You by proxy have to now take this confrontation and that's just a part of the friendship. So it is what it is. Now, the next day, Zach is sulking back in the damn office acting uh bryce if he needs to go to therapy and if he needs some things to work on this is another point where i'm just like yo bryce needs a goddamn spine it's one thing to try not to get in the middle of anything and to try not to be confrontational but if you really consider yourself zach's friend if you really want y'all to move on and be solidified in each other's lives and tell this nigga the truth tell us that he is emotionally unstable that he is mentally manipulative that the things that he do deeply affect people and it has nothing to do with you trying to rub your lips on his goddamn lips it has everything to do with watching him basically throw tantrums and flail out at so many different occasions and then also ride your back all the way to the goddamn bank and don't give you no damn respect for it but you know tyler just gonna let bryce play the passive asian so okay i guess now over at fatima's job she gets a call from the therapist <laughs> who wants to see her at noon because he got some news about uh zach and then angela thinks it's time to come plead the case for oh zach just looks so pitiful oh girl he just really was begging last night girl don't nobody give a shit okay nobody cares about no baby baby please is in no zachary trying to get his joe to see on when his ass is dead ass wrong he only did it because he saw me with paul because before he saw me with Paul, he was pulling up to that joint with his homeboys to get his Zach attack on. So girl, cut it. And what the fuck happened to you actually not liking Zach? Because now all of a sudden we so damn male identified Angela, which is one of my problems with her. Like I cannot do pick me women. I cannot. And Angela, I'm sorry, babes, but you are definitely a pick me. In this moment, Zach has called you all types of bees. He didn't walked up in your house and disrespected you. Got the hollering and acting a monkey fool. And you sitting across from Fatima telling him, telling her, oh, he just looks so pitiful girl no he looked disrespectful he looked like he lacked decorum he looked like a nigga that's what he looked like what are we talking about angela girl moving on zach shows up to try to get some advice from tony at the damn barbershop and he wants him winds up running into nathan and in this we get to see how zach is like not all the way in agreement with how nathan lives his life but he also is like playing around and i made this comment with my last breakdown about how i don't appreciate nathan i mean i don't appreciate zach and tony making it comfortable for nathan to be a trash ass man within their friendship or just in life and still be friends with him in the way that they are and i still feel the damn same regardless of zach saying well aren't you married and why are you with this girl you should know that that's the decorum of the girl like he spent so much time trying to downplay belinda meanwhile nathan is trash too nathan is no damn better so like why not spend time telling him how trash he is versus trying to shit on this girl who of course she is she tried to climb you like a tree she didn't did this and did that and hurt your fiance cool 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 but you know this man and you know he raggedy but you want to kiki and haw haw with his ass like no wow that's going down beautiful as paul shows up at the at the law firm and he wants to ask fatima out she agrees they going to dinner tonight and it is just a timing for me like oh, i just wish fatima was had already broken up with zach and like had a little bit of time because this could be something whether y'all are teams a team or not i don't really give a damn 
Paul and Fatima could really be something if Tyler had given it a full on setup for her to be truly in pursuit of joy, happiness, and equally yoke love. Now, going back to the damn barbershop after Zach leaves, Nathan and Tony are sitting out there. And then this is where we get the full on context of Belinda and Nathan. And Belinda, girl, you not only trifling, but you desperate. Because you told this man to come and buy you some Chinese food. And he's talking about some you treat me because I ain't got it until I get paid. So he broke. And it's not your man. And you know he married. So you... <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things that's wrong with this and this is not shaming broke men because if you broke and working towards something that's a whole other thing that ain't nathan nathan is broke in finances he's broke in mindset he's broke in spirituality he's broken discipline and he's broke in emotional intelligence and communication he's a fucking buffoon that's what he is and you are over here thinking that this is cute, thinking that this is fly, and then you want to downplay it to Angela talking about, girl, he just something to do when ain't nothing to do. That's your damn problem. You need a hobby or something. Hating ass bitches need hobbies because that is y'all's problem. You don't have nothing else better to do but to hate and hoe because you don't have no damn hobbies. You need to get some. I need Belinda to make her exit because her and Nathan are just the scum of the earth, and I wouldn't piss on them if they was on fire. And right, be right behind them, I ain't even gonna hold you, it's Connie. Now, Connie is funny. I like her personality. I love the actress who plays Connie. But she a raggedy hoe. And you know this boy is like in love with somebody else. And Zach being so comfortable. And you can just see him let his guard down around her. You can see he don't have no problem with her hugging on him. With, him, with her telling him to bend down so he can hear her pussy. And I'm just like, sir, this is not you sticking your penis in her. But all of this is inappropriate if you actually want a healthy relationship with somebody else. Why are we allowing Connie to operate in this way? But this ain't the biggest point for why his ass is in the projects. He he does say, you know, in another life, after all of that ensues, but I'm not comfortable with how comfortable his ass is with Connie. The reason why he is there, cause he's trying to talk to his damn mama. He winds up paying Jeremiah so that he can talk to his mama, but then we don't actually get to hear them talk. And the next time we see them, they're actually at the goddamn therapist's office where the therapist gets Fatima and brings her in. And I'm just like, sir, why in the hell is Fatima here? If you didn't got the whole Zachary clan here that has created all the Zachary trauma, Work on the problem at hand. Fatima don't need to come in until y'all have figured out a lot more and Zach can get to not only begging, but lining up his behavior. His be change of behavior needs to be his apology, not just a damn, I'm sorry that you about to have this man articulate in this goddamn therapy office. I don't like it. I don't like nothing about it. Fatima, I appreciate you showing up because you care about Zach so much, even though y'all are broken up. But girl, you should have seen this goddamn family and said, nope, this ain't for me, and turned your ass around. Because why is she here? Zach, and this is uh, this is the thing I'm gonna end on because Zach is hollering and screaming at the top of episode 11 about how Fatima lied to him and brought that therapist in and lied to him about this therapist. And then you turn around and trick her into coming here by way of the same therapist. So was it a problem or was it an effective way to introduce a, a very controversial topic so that you could tackle some traumatic ass shit? Which one is it, Zachariah? Which one is it, Zachary? And y'all can tell me in the comment section down below because I'm going to go ahead and end it here. It's your good sis you love to talk TV with. I cannot wait to keep the conversation going in the comment section. Give this video a like because you made it all the way to the end. So I believe that you liked it. And if you haven't subscribed already, these last 22 minutes should have gotten you to subscribe. So like, what's the problem? Go ahead. You know you want to. See you in the next one.